All right, everybody. Here is your first, if you're in math course one, your first flip lesson, and it covers ratios. Okay, so let's start right off the bat here, talking about, um, you know, what, what is a ratio, the definition? And you're going to need to write this down in your flip notes, but a, the true definition of a ratio is a comparison of two numbers using division. And there are three ways that you can express it. One way is to write it as a, using a colon. You can write it as a fraction. And you can write using the word two. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind here when you're when you're looking at these and when you're reading these, actually, when you're reciting them, is to understand that they're all, even though they're all written differently, you know, this is, we're using a colon here, fraction here, and the word two here, even though they're all written differently, they're all stated, they're all said the same way. So whether it's written like this, this, or this, it's all the same. So nine to seven, nine to seven, nine to seven, 9 to 7. Now that's literally, you have the word 2 in there, but no matter what, you want to say it that way. It, you know, some of the mistakes that a lot of us make with ratios, especially when it's written like a fraction, we might be tempted to write 9 sevenths and, or, or say 9 sevenths, I should say, but uh, that wouldn't be actually the, the correct, if we're being really nitpicky about it, that wouldn't be the correct way to say or recite um, a ratio. You say it as 9 to 7. You might also notice that this is improper, you know, uh, an improper fraction. Now, I know you just got done with um, problems, especially in the last chapter where we said to you, hey, if it's improper, change it to a mixed number. But if it's, if it's improper, it's okay. It's okay if it's improper. Um, and the reason for that is because the definition of a ratio is that it's two numbers. If you change this, you know, if you were to change this to a mixed number, one and two sevenths, for instance, you know, if you were to change that to one and two sevenths, well, that's no longer a ratio. I mean, I understand that nine over seven equals one and two sevenths, but that technically isn't a ratio because now it's three numbers, one, two, and three. That does not count as a ratio. So you want to make sure you leave it improper, no matter what. Even if it's obnoxiously improper, like you know, uh, 143 over one, right? you're going to be tempted to write that. Well, can I just write 143? And you really can't, because you have to keep a ratio improper. Okay, you have to. Well, not just improper. You have to keep it as two numbers. Okay, so some some basics there. You know, ratios for the most part, especially at this level, are pretty easy. But there are some technical things you have to get across first. Okay, so here's our first example. Um, let's say that Andrea has eight textbooks and six notebooks. What is the ratio of textbooks to notebooks? Now, uh, one thing that you may want to make a little note of here is how it's worded. Okay, first thing that's worded is eight textbooks, and the second thing that's worded is six notebooks. Now, that's a clue as to um, how you need to write this out as a ratio. So that's going to be a clue. You want to make sure that um, the way it's worded, you know, basically um, tells you how to write it. So there's our ratio, eight to six. So there's eight textbooks to six notebooks. And uh, just like with fractions, we always reduce. So we always want to have our ratios in simplest form. So 8 to 6. What number goes into 8 and 6? Well, um, 2 does, right? 2 goes into 8 and 2 goes into 6. They're both even, so 2 goes into them. So uh, if you were to write it three ways, one of the ways is writing it 4 to 3. Fraction, 4 to 3. You can leave it in proper. Oops. Leave it in proper. Never change a mixed number uh, or a whole number. And then using the word two. Now let's make some kind of common sense type uh, of business here, but uh, this basically means there are four textbooks for every three notebooks. That's what that means. For every four, 
textbooks, there's three notebooks. Same thing here, four to three, four to three. That's all that means. Okay, next example here. There are 15 apples for every three oranges. What is the ratio of apples to oranges? Now you'll notice here in the problem that apples is written first and oranges is written second. And that's the way you want to order your ratio. So you want apples on top and oranges on the bottom. Or apples first, then oranges, if you're writing it as a colon or using a colon. So 15 to 3. Now uh, make sure you put that in lowest terms. And what number goes into 15 and also goes into 3? Hmm, what number? All right, looks like it's going to be 3, right? So what's 15 divided by 3? I think that is 5. And what's 3 divided by itself? Well, it's 1. That's pretty simple math right there. So 5 to 1. And there are your ratios. 5 apples for every 1 orange. Here's your fraction. 5 apples for every 1 orange. And using 2. 5 apples for every 1 orange. 5 to 2. That's how that works. 5, I actually said 5 to 2, sorry. 5 to 1 using the word 2. All right, so there you go. I mean, this is pretty simple. So, you know, if you guys are ever encounter a question where it says, hey, write, write a ratio uh, three different ways, that's what we're talking about. I'm not talking about like, okay, well, let's write 10 to 2, and let's also write 15 to 3, and, uh, you know, 50 to 10. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for the colon, the fraction, and using the word 2. That's what you want to do, okay? All right, next example here. Class is a ratio of 18 girls to 15 boys. What is the ratio of boys to students? Well, we know how many boys there are. It says 15 boys. Well, students, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of arithmetic there, but it's not that hard. Just add 18 plus 15, and you should get a million. No, actually, I think it comes out to 33, right? So always reduce. That's something that you, you probably know, and it's been drilled into you by now, but, you know, just got to remind you, 15 to 33. All right, so what does 15 and 33 divide by? Looks like you can use 3 again. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. 33 divided by 3 is 11. So 5 to 11. So using a colon, there's 5 students, or sorry, 5 boys for every 11 students. And here's the fraction, 5 to 11. And here's the colon, 5 to 11. There you go. So we used, just to make sure you understand, we used 11. I mean, I know that number did not show up up here, um, but we used 11 because it reduced. We ended up having 33, OK? So there was 33 students because 18 plus 15 is 33. That's what we did. OK, next example here. A box of Legos has a ratio of three blue bricks for every eight bricks. If a pile of Legos has 48 red, how many blue bricks are in the pile? Now here's an example of a ratio problem where uh, we have a missing value. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a simple ratio. Um, well, they're called actually equivalent ratio problem where we're gonna try to figure out what that missing, um, how many missing blue bricks there are. So there's your ratio, three to eight. Three blue for every eight red, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to compare that to another ratio. We're going to compare it to the ratio that's basically given. It says if a um, pile of Legos has 48 red, red bricks, then you're going to set up like this. So three, three is your blue number, and eight is your red number. So when you set it up over here, when you set everything up over here, you want everything to match, okay? So here's red, red to red, blue to unknown blue. We don't know how many blue there are. So we're just going to set this up as equal ratios and just look for what the factor is that gets us from 8 to 48. Now that's pretty simple. It's times 6. So multiply the same value on the top. 3 times 6 is 18. So there you go. So if the ratio stays true, if the ratio holds up, that, you know, the ratio of 3 to 8, 
then there should be 18 blue in the pile. Okay? Unless, you know, maybe your little brother stole one, but I doubt that. So 18 blue. All right, here's another one. Derek Rose scored five points for every nine shots he attempted. If he scored 35 points, how many shots did he attempt? So let's set up our ratio. All right, let's set up our first ratio here. Five points for every nine attempts. Five points for every nine attempts. So how would you write that as a, as a, uh, as a fraction, as a ratio? Five points for every nine. Well, it's pretty simple. Five over nine. Five to nine. Okay. And you're going to notice here, okay, this, this number represents points. Okay. This number, this part of the ratio, represents attempts. So when we set up the equal ratio next to it, when we set that up, we want that to match up as well. Now it says right here, he scored 35 points. So you want 35 right here. Now, why do you want points there? Because points is here too. Okay, so points, points, attempts, unknown attempts. We don't know how many attempts there were. Okay, but we do know his ratio of points to shots. We know what that is. So how many times does 5 go into 35? What's the factor? 7. So you're going to multiply by 7. So 9 times 7 is? 63. So there you go. So he took 63 shots. That would be a lot of shots. But uh, and he scored 35 points. And there you go. 63 attempts. Okay, so this does it for your um, for your first slip lesson. Make sure that um, you fill out your flip notes. You know, you can always go back and um, look over part of the lesson again, since it's a video. You can always stop, go back to it, uh, look at it again and again and again. Whatever you need to do, write down notes, and let your teacher know tomorrow, the next day in class, whether you were confused about anything, and we'll help you. So, fill out your flip notes, do the examples, you know, that we that I had for you and um, come to class prepared and ready to work out some ratio problems. Okay, so everyone have a good night. See you tomorrow.